Hey everyone, I have a video for you to help you with the molar mass of the unknown gas lab. Um, so uh, ideally, obviously, you would be doing this lab with a lab partner in class, um, but we have to be a little creative with online learning. So you're gonna, we're gonna work through most of the lab together and you're gonna watch me do certain parts of the lab and you will use my data um, to complete your calculations. So the first thing you need to do is download the lab report. This one is for AP, um, but obviously download the lab report for your class on Canvas. And then there's just page two. Okay, if you have not already, I need you to watch the video link that was posted on Canvas that goes along with this lab. So open up a new tab, pause this video, um, because I'm going to refer to this very short video clip. It's only um, like just under four minutes long. Um, but essentially, it will help us with the pre-lab question. So please pause this video, watch this four-minute video clip. Um, otherwise, the pre-lab questions will not make much sense. Okay, so hopefully that video gave you a little idea of what we're going to do. Um, there are some small differences, but I, I think this teacher did an awesome job of talking through maybe some of the calculations. Um, and I'm hoping then the pre-lab questions will also help us with that as well. So let's say that we have um, 1.613 grams of a gas in a sealed tank and it's released and collected over water just like he did in the video so bubbling it through 17 degrees celsius water and um, collected a total volume of 600 milliliters um, and then there's the air pressure so the first thing and um, i do disagree with this teacher on one account because we know that um, the the inside that flask there is air pressure and there is the vapor pressure of the water, right? Water um, on the surface of water has a little bit of pressure as some of the water turns from liquid to gas and then back from gas to liquid. Um, so I, I really, if I'm gonna do PV equals NRT eventually, I just want the pressure of the dry gas. I don't, I cannot really assume, like he said in this video, that the air pressure is the same as the dry gas pressure. So really what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take the vapor pressure of the water plus the pressure of the dry gas. That is going to equal the air pressure for that day. Whereas he was just saying that the dry gas equaled the air. He wasn't taking into account um, the vapor pressure. So first thing we have to do is actually find the vapor pressure. So on your lab, you um, on the front, you have a chart and it's based off figuring out um, if we have if we know the temperature of water we can figure out the vapor pressure so in this particular problem for the pre-lab they told us that the water temperature was 17 degrees celsius which means the p of the vapor is 14.5 mm hg we are going to ultimately use everything in atm so let's just switch this real quick 14.5 mm hg we know that one atmosphere is equal to 760 mm hg so ultimately i'm going to take 14.5 divided by 760 and with that i got 0 0.0191 atm all right so now i know that my vapor pressure was 0 0.0191 atmosphere plus the pressure of the dry gas equals the pressure of the air, which they gave us in the problem. The air pressure that day was 0 0.975 atm. So I just need to isolate and I'm gonna subtract the vapor pressure from both sides, so 0.975 minus 0 0.0191. And that gives me a pressure of the dry gas equal to 0 0.956 atm all right so we have the pressure of the gas now it says calculate the molar mass of the gas so in order to find molar mass i need to know because i know molar mass is equal to grams divided by moles so i need to have grams and i need moles well one way that we can find moles is if we are not at STP, not at standard temperature and pressure, which we are not, we can do PV equals NRT. So we know the pressure, 0 0.956 atm. And in the problem, they told us that, see, that we collected 
0.6000 liters. We're looking for N. R is always 0 0.08206 with that complicated unit. And temperature, the water was 17 degrees Celsius, but we know that this has to be in Kelvin. So I'm going to add 273 to that temperature. So now let's solve for N. All right, I plugged this in my calculator, and I got N is equal to 0 0.0241 moles. In the problem, they told us that how many grams of the gas was released. So we can now take, if molar mass is equal to grams divided by moles, then molar mass must be 1.613 grams divided by the moles, 0 0.0241 moles. And when I plug that in my calculator, I get a molar mass for this unknown gas of 66.9 grams per mole. All right, next pre-lab question says identify what the gas is and they give us some options. Um, so on your lab, I would like to see you calculating these molar masses. So for example, CO2 is gonna be one times 12.01 plus two times 16.0. So that gives me a molar mass of 44.01 grams per mole. So again, I would like you to show your work actually calculating those molar masses for practice. Um, and then I will put the answers right here so you can check. So C3H6 is 42.09 grams per mole. Again, show, the, show your work for that on your lab. SO2 is 64.06 grams per mole. And argon, again, you won't have any work for argon because it's just one element, is 39.95 grams per mole. So out of these, which one is closest? Well, I'm going to argue that SO2 has the closest molar mass. So the gas is SO2 because the calculated value is closest to the mass of SO2. It also says, is um, the molar mass we calculated higher or lower? Um, our calculated molar mass is uh, higher. than the actual molar mass. Okay, um, this is to help you with your data table. So what measurements do we need to take in order to do those calculations? So the calculations we just did in number one are very similar to what you are gonna have to do. Um, so first, I would say we're gonna have to take the temperature of the water. Why? We can use it um, to look up the vapor pressure, right, on that chart, we needed to know the water to know what the vapor pressure was, and it's used as the temp in PV equals NRT to find the moles. Okay, so we use the temperature twice. We also need to measure the pressure of the air um, so that's probably something we're going to look up based off the weather. We need to measure the volume of the gas collected in the inverted. He used um, the Erlen, or the excuse me the volumetric flask, right, which had a line right here, and so we measured to that line. Um, we're going to actually use a graduated cylinder. We need the mass of the uh, lighter that we're going to use. His was that tank, um, but we need the mass of the lighter before we let out the gas, and we need the mass of the lighter after we let out the gas. And I think that's all he measured in his video. So in the pre-lab question number one, they just straight up told us, let's see, it said, um, 1.613 grams of a gas in a sealed tank was collected. But how did they actually determine that value? Well, in the video, we saw it very clearly. We are going to mass the lighter, which he actually used that uh, end dust can, but we're going to use a lighter. So we're going to mass the lighter before minus the mass 
of the lighter after. And that difference, it should go down, right? The mass should get lighter because we're releasing the gas, will give us the mass of the gas. To, so that way, when we do grams divided by moles, that will be our grams. All right, guys, I have hopefully all of the equipment I need. I went to the store, don't worry, I wore a mask, and got this uh, lighter that we're going to actually use. Um, the cool part about a lighter, if you hit this red thing, you can kind of hear how it lets out the gas. Um, it's really this striker here, this piece um, that you can spin that releases the flame. So I'm really just going to be pushing this red button, not even worrying about the striker part. Obviously, I don't want an underwater flame that would just ruin the lighter, okay? So... Step one, um, he masked his can in the video, so I'm going to zero my balance and get the starting mass of the lighter, so that lighter before. Let's see, we got 21.49 grams. All right, I just went to weather.com, and it told me that the... Um, Air pressure in Parker, Colorado today, where I'm doing this experiment, was 29.76 inches of mercury. Um, and I was kind of hoping that it would be recorded in atmosphere. So let's just change that real quick. I know that 29.9 inches of mercury is equal to one atmosphere. And so that gives me the air pressure today at 0.995 ATM. So we'll record that guy, zero point. 995 ATM. And again, I got that number here um, by just looking at the weather report um, for today for Parker, Colorado to get the air pressure. All right, next we got to fill a tub and we're using a graduated cylinder instead of the volumetric flask. Um, so that way I, I can just collect as, as much gas as I want and I can record exactly what we get. I don't have to be like getting it perfect right on one line. Um, so we're going to fill these guys up with water. Hopefully you can see. And then I am gonna fill the graduated cylinder all the way to the top so there's no air bubbles with the water. But you don't need to watch this bucket fill. I'll check back in once we're ready to roll. All right, so I filled up my graduated cylinder. You can see it's very full um, and the water tub. I'm gonna use this uh, digital thermometer that I found in my kitchen um, to take the temperature of the water. Um, essentially what we're assuming is because the gas from the lighter is going to bubble through the water, it will be the same temperature as the water. So I get 24.21, okay, so 24.2 20, degrees Celsius. Okay, now we're gonna use the chart from the front of this lab to look up the vapor pressure. And I'm just gonna round to the nearest whole number. So the nearest whole number for the water temp would be 24 degrees Celsius, meaning the vapor pressure would be 22.4. And this chart gives me pressure in mmHg. Okay, we'll see how this goes. I might have to do like 12 takes. But here's the idea, I, want, I don't want any air bubbles in here. So I'm gonna put my hand over this and invert it into the tub with the goal that it stays entirely filled with water, no air bubbles. Um, the nice part is that in the video you watch, um, that spray he was using from the can had a nice long hose. Well, this lighter doesn't have a hose, right? And I don't wanna have to miss with this being upside down, right? I, I don't have a partner to help me. Um, so I'm gonna use a funnel inside to actually help me so that that way I don't have to have perfect aim when releasing. I don't know if you can see, no. So that way, I don't have to have perfect aim when releasing the gas. It can kind of be all over. So we'll see how this goes. Oh, pretty good. One a little tiny air bubble. That'll work. Um, I was, I've seen it all the way down here before. And then I'm just going to kind of tilt it and insert this funnel. Not letting any air get in. Perfect. Try to dry off my hand. All right, next step is release gas from the lighter um, in, until there's a significant amount in the graduated cylinder. So um, maybe not totally full, but very close to full, and then record the exact volume collected. So we'll try to do this, it's a lot easier. So I'm gonna, remember, I'm gonna dunk this guy, but I'm just releasing the actual gas. You can see it's starting to bubble. 
So the gas is traveling through the water into the funnel and it's collecting, I hope you can see, at the top. Nice. Almost done. That's probably good. So I'm gonna take out this lighter. I'm gonna try to hold this flat. And what I'm seeing is, and granted it's upside down, right? We're reading it backwards. But that this is like 55, 56, maybe 57 milliliters collected. So I'll write that down, dry off my hand real quick. So I collected 57 milliliters, we'll say 57.0. So I have a, a correct measurement there. So now um, we need to find the mass, but um, it's dripping wet. And if you see, there's lots of crevices. So one, I'm gonna dry with my towel, but with it carefully not pushing the button. We don't wanna lose any more gas, but I'm also gonna shake it. And I don't know if you can see all the water that's flicking off. So I'm gonna shake this guy and try to get as much water out of all the crevices as humanly possible, because the water could mess up our measurement if it's not completely dry. All right, hopefully that's good. We'll dry it one more time. Kind of blowing to get any water droplets out of there. Okay, so we're gonna zero out our balance. Twenty one point four five grams. Oop, four four five. All right, so I know that frozen picture says four six, but I'm I swear I'm staring at it right now and it's hovering at uh point four five. So we're gonna do twenty one point four five grams is my after mass. Okay, so here are the calculations and use the pre-lab questions to guide you, but you're going to have to turn the vapor pressure from the chart to atmospheres. You're going to have to solve for the pressure of the dry gas, just like we did in pre-lab 1A. Um, you need to find the mass of the gas released, um, and then you need to find moles from Pivnert, or we do, if you're an AP, we do know another equation um, that involves density. Um, so actually, maybe let's try both. Find moles and density, and remember density for this unit is grams per liter, okay? And then you'll find the molar mass either using grams divided by moles or dirt over P. So I want you to calculate it two separate ways, one using Pivnert and then grams divided by moles. And then if you are in AP Chem, I want you to also calculate the molar mass using dirt over P, that other equation. Hopefully, we will get the same answer. If you are in regular chem, you can just use your PV equals NRT to find N, and then do grams divided by moles to find molar mass. And then there are some conclusion questions, um, just some clarifies clarifiers. Um, for number one, you need to calculate the molar mass of those gases that are given and determine which is closest, just like in the pre-lab. Um, please show your work finding those molar masses because um, that is your evidence. The molar mass, like that's how you are deciding. So show your effort calculating the molar mass. Um, the actual gas is butane. Lighters are filled with butane. So you'll tell me what, what we got closest based off the data I collected. We'll see how good of a job I did. But the true gas is butane. So you're going to calculate calculate percent air, which is where you take the actual, what we got in the lab, by d minus the molar mass of butane, divided by the molar mass of butane times 100%, and then tell me some possible sources of air. Why, why was our, um, the one that we calculated in the lab 
the what, what we've actually got in the lab. Why was that higher or lower than what butane was? Good luck.